What is going on guys? Welcome back to Kyle's Gaming. It's your boy Kyle and in today's video guys I'm gonna be counting down what I think are the top five worst wonder weapons in Call of Duty Zombies. So yes, for this one we are going to be looking over all of Call of Duty Zombies except like, you know, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4. This is World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2 as per the usual around here. So uh, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, hitting that like and subscribe button, help me out. I'm on the road to 100 subscribers. Just keep in mind, guys, this is my own personal opinion. And get ready to potentially be a bit pissed off. And please, please watch until the very end. And I know me saying that now doesn't exactly sound very good, but just... Trust me, it's really not that bad. I have reasons as to why I'm going to say what I'm going to say. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Kicking off our list at number five, guys, we have the Wind Staff, which basically is just a downgraded version of the Thunder Gun. So really, I think the only thing I could really do here is just go through where the Wind Staff falls short, then try and talk about the few good points of the Wind Staff. So, bad point number one, the building process. In a nutshell, the building process goes as follows. You have to go to the footprints of each of the three robots, wait in those footprints, wait for them to step on you, uh, and there will be a hatch with yellow lights around it you shoot that hatch you'll go up into the foot when the robot steps on you it'll take you inside the robot to where you can grab the staff and then you just exit from the tubes it doesn't sound too bad except for the fact that the robots appearance are random they're randomized you have no idea how long it's going to take for those robots to get there and the hatch on the foot that's open switches pretty much every single time they come you never know for sure which foot is going to be the foot that's open. So that makes it even more of a chore. And you would think that with all of that, it actually would pay off in the end. Well, it sort of does. The wind staff is not terrible, but when you look at that, the lightning staff, the fire staff, my personal favorite, and the ice staff, it's just the weakest of the bunch. It's a lot weaker than the Thunder Gun. In fact, it only lasts up until round 23. I'm pretty sure the Thunder Gun is able to last way past round 30, 40, even 50. Like, when was the last time you ever actually went down with a Thunder Gun because it became ineffective against the zombies? That's the problem with the Wind Staff. Now, yes, obviously you can upgrade it, but the power still doesn't really do a whole lot. All three other staffs are actually more powerful than this one. So really the only reason that I would even bother building this thing is if I was doing the Easter egg and I don't. So wind staff is not exactly terrible. It is better obviously than the other four on this list seeing as how it came in at number five, but there's just a lot to be desired from it. So I had to put it on here at number five. Moving down to the number four spot on our list, guys, we have the Winter's Howl. Honestly, I can't even go on a rant about this gun. This is basically the tone I'm going to keep for this gun because it's just laughably bad. I can't even get mad at it. It's just laughably bad, but it is such an enigma. And the enigma here is why Treyarch put it on the two hardest maps in not just Black Ops 1, but all of Call of Duty Zombies. Five and Verrucked. Seriously, you couldn't just give me a thunder gun and call it a day, make me happy. You had to give me this piece of crap. Now, I will say, it does come in at number four on the list because I do kind of like how it does give me that brief window of opportunity to be able to kill the zombies, run away, do whatever. And it does have a bit of a good spread, like it covers a pretty decent area with the zombies. And when you upgrade it, it does become a bit more powerful. But Really, the thing that bugs me so much about this thing is the ammunition. Th so, the Thunder Gun, I think, when Pack-a-Punt has like 24 shots in it, and as we all know, as I just explained, that thing is massively powerful. It's like infinite damage. But the Winter's Howl only gives you 30 bullets for like the most minimal damage, probably not even any damage at all, really, and it's like... Yeah, I, honestly, I am trying to keep an even tone, but like, so it is pretty frustrating, it is pretty annoying, but at the end of the day, it's just laughably bad. 
you get in, you're just like, oh, hearty har har, I see, Treyarch, thanks for the troll. Yeah, that'll make a great addition to the uh, video for my YouTube channel and everything. People will really get a kick out of this. And uh, I honestly, I just cannot imagine the reason that they would put it in here, especially on like the two absolute hardest maps. But I do like it for that brief window of opportunity it gives you to kind of get set back up and everything. So I just couldn't put it any higher up on the list, but it definitely deserved a spot at number four. Moving down to the number three spot on our list, guys, we have the VR-11. Now, as with this gun, as well as the next two guns, these ones are not laughably bad. These ones are just bad, bad. So don't expect a real calm, even tone like I had most of the time with the last gun. This gun is probably the absolute most pointless weapon in all of Call of Duty Zombies, and it's a wonder weapon. So basically, here's a few things that it does. Number one, it gets rid of George Romero for one round. Wow. Oh, so you mean I don't have to attempt to uh, put billions and billions of my bullets into him only for him to suddenly kill me? I can just shoot him with this thing after I pack a punch it? Oh, Treyarch, you are shitting me, guys. Well, what else does this thing do? <gasps> no, it turns the zombies into humans so that the other zombies will chase after them and leave me alone for a little while? Oh, you, you guys just hit a home run here. Screw you, Treyarch. This gun is probably just... I, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what the point of having this gun would be. The ammo is so bad. It starts with 9 full ammo and 18 when pack-a-punched. And the clip size is 3 and then 6. Wow. Just wow. In a game where you had the Thunder Gun, yes, at 24. Black Ops 2, Windstaff, even that was at like the 40s and 50s on its magazine size. You made a weapon that has the lowest ammo count in all of Call of Duty Zombies. Way to go, Treyarch. Way to freaking go. The only good things I can say about this gun is somewhat of the George Romero thing and the fact that it doesn't kill you. You can't die from this gun and that is definitely a plus. And yes, you can shoot the zombies three times in the Pack-A-Punch version to actually kill them instead of turning them into humans. But like, why would you do that? Why, why would you waste what little ammo you have to do that? Why would it even need to be like that? Why would it even need to take three shots for it to do that? This gun, honestly, those are literally the only two good things I can say about that. So let's just move on to our number two spot because I have been dreading this ever since the beginning of this video. And now that I've just gone on this rant about this weapon, you guys are going to really hate me for this one. And coming in at number two on the list, guys, it almost pains me to do this, but it has to be the ray gun. Now just wait, wait, wait right there. Don't hit that dislike. Do not exit out of the video. Please just let me explain. The ray gun, in my opinion, is good for the earlier rounds. Like, let's say you only have 950 points. All you have is like the M14 or the MK, MPK5, whatever and you just need a hit at the box. The ray gun can actually come in handy in that instance. But I feel it's only in that is instance. Guys, I can give you at least three excellent reasons as to why the ray gun needs to be at number two. So the number one reason, it can kill you. That's got to be the biggest reason here. It can kill you. The rest of the weapons on this list, and I think the rest of the wonder weapons in all of Call of Duty Zombies, cannot kill you, including the number one pick. But believe me, there will be plenty of time to explain why that's number one and not this. The number two reason is because of the damage. Guys, once you reach round 18 to 22, no pack-a-punch, that's when all you're getting is crawlers. And when you pack-a-punch it, 
it only goes up to around 22 to 25. That's only a three round difference between no pack a punch power and yes pack a punch power. That is not how it should be. At least with other weapons on here like the Wind Staff, Winter's Howl, even the VR11, their damage went up and they would last rounds and rounds and rounds and especially they would not kill you and then reason number three it is just so overrated guys both of these first two reasons together pretty much make up the third reason as to why it's so overrated and everyone knows that it's an overrated weapon so that pretty much just makes my point for the third reason as to why this deserves to be number two now i will say you know, again, it's good for some of the earlier rounds and everything, and I'm very sorry if you guys feel differently, but honestly, that's just how I feel about it. I feel it's overrated, it's not hugely powerful for a lot of the later rounds, and it can kill you. Really, the only time this will actually be good past the later rounds is if you have PhD, because then it can't kill you. But seriously, that, come on guys, I need PhD Flopper to be protected from my Wonder Weapon? Are you kidding me? At least with this versus the number one pick, using this gun does not necessarily guarantee you go down or you die. But number one definitely does, so let's go ahead and move on before I piss you guys off any more than I already have. And coming in at the number one spot on our list of top five worst wonder weapons in Call of Duty Zombies, we have the jet gun. The freaking jet gun. Oh my god, what good could I possibly say about the jet gun? It's only on transit, so we don't have to worry about it anywhere else. Um. Oh, it fits in well with the aesthetic of the rest of the map because both are just lousy pieces of shit. So, basically, here is how the uh, jet gun works. So you go to um, the cabin between the power station and the town, uh, in the tunnel between bus depot and diner, in the cornfield by farm, which is Nocturne Toten, nice little easter egg there, and then down inside the power center, and you will find the four parts of the jet gun, but you can only carry one part at a time. So guess what you have to do? You have to go get the part, go to town, and build. Part, build, part, build, part, build, and then you have the jet gun. And you want to know what it does? It basically does kind of what the paralyzer does, if the Paralyzer had a handicapped little brother. Because here is the problem with it. It only lasts for 15 seconds and it really does not do that much damage. Now, it's pretty good in the sense that it does do okay damage, but when you look at all of the other weapons on this list, even the VR-11 served some sort of purpose. This really has got to be like the biggest troll in all of Call of Duty Zombies history. They give you, they make you go through all this work. I mean, hell, you thought the wind staff was tedious and annoying to have to build? Try building the jet gun, use it for 15 seconds, and see if it was all freaking worth it. But I mean, hey, it's transit. What the hell do you expect? Alright, now that I'm done with my little rant, I can do my outro for you guys. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, do not forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for new videos posted on a regular basis. I am on the road to 100 subscribers, hoping to get those by the end of the year, so anything you guys can do to help me out would be awesome and greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time.